No other poet in the Scottish borders is more shrouded in mystery or quoted as a prophet than Sir Thomas of Erkeldoon, also known as Thomas Learmont, but better known as Thomas the Rhymer. His life is wrapped up in romantic and legendary folklore. Little is known about the man himself, but his prophecies and poetry have survived as an enduring legacy. A Laird, Thomas Learmont, or Learmonth, was born at what is now Earlston in Berwickshire around 1220, and he first springs to fame in around 1286, when it is said that on a visit to Dunbar Castle, Patrick IV, the eighth Earl of Dunbar and Earl of March, jokingly inquired if anything remarkable was to happen in the next few days. To his surprise, Thomas told him, Alas, for tomorrow a day of misery and calamity. Before the twelfth hour shall be heard a blast, so vehement that it shall exceed all those which have been yet heard in Scotland. A blast which shall strike the nation with amazement, shall confound those who hear it, shall humble what is lofty and what is unbending shall level to the ground. The following day, the Earl, who had noticed no change in the weather, was just preparing to seat himself at his table, having decided at the ninth hour that Thomas was telling tales, when a messenger arrived with news. Alexander III had fallen from his horse over rocks between Kinghorn and Burnt Island in Fife and was killed. From this remarkable prophecy, the rhymer became known as True Thomas. From here on in, romantic tales of his time with the fairies evolved. The Queen of Fairyland had heard of his fame, and one day she decided to visit him. An interview took place at Huntley Bank, a slope on the Eildon Hill, about halfway between Melrose and where Abbotsford stands today. Following their conversation, Thomas ventured into Fairyland with her, where he ended up staying for seven years. Although he wrote many poems in his lifetime, he never wrote about his experiences there, as the Queen, he said, had sworn him to secrecy. She had also bound him to return to Fairyland whenever she wished him to do so. After the seven years, Thomas returned to the Eildon Hill, took up position and would utter his sayings, which are said to have come true. One of the most well-known ones was, Be tied, be tied, whate'er be tied, Hague shall be Hague of Bermerside. Up until the later 19th century, Thomas the Rhymer was one of the most quoted border poets. The old poem St Tristram is generally accredited to him, and there are very few places in that locale that don't have a prophecy associated with it. But his sayings were not only local. Not only did he prophesize the death of Alexander III, he also foretold major Scottish battles, Bannockburn, Flodden and Pinky. The Earl of Dunbar visited Thomas one day, telling him he was annoyed that he was predicting so many national disasters and threatened to give him a drubbing unless he told him some good news. Terrified, the rhymer told him, The first of blessings I shall thee show is by a burn that's called of bread, where Saxon men shall tine a bow and find their arrows lack the head. Beside that brig, out o'er that burn, where water bickereth bright and sheen, shall many a falling coarser spurn, and knights shall die in battle keen. This was a clear reference to the Battle of Bannockburn in 1314, a burn that's called bread, the Bannock. There is another version of this prophecy that just reads, The burn no breed shall Renfu read, red with the blood of those on the field of battle. Encouraged to hear such good news, the Earl demanded he tell him 
who should rule over the whole country. The rhymer told him, A French queen shall bear a son, shall rule all Britain to the sea. He of the Bruce's blood shall come, as near as to the ninth degree. He is, of course, speaking of Mary, Queen of Scots, and her son, James the Sixth. Thomas's life is supposed to have ended at Erkeldoon or Erlston. The story goes that a great feast had been prepared, and once it was finished, the poet entertained the gathering with his stories. After the guests had retired for the night, Lord Douglas couldn't sleep and was lying awake when he thought he heard footsteps. Starting up, he called his page, and together they called out to the intruder. No answer was given, but the noise of the footsteps continued. Rushing out of Erkeldoon Tower, he saw an astonishing sight. A beautiful heart and hind of snowy white passing along the banks of the river. The Queen of the Fairies had come to take Thomas away. The rhymer had foretold the Earl that this would happen when he said, First he walks pale, then he walks red. Never a word he spake but three. My sanders run, my thread is spun. This sign regardeth me. Having hung his harp around his neck and saying his goodbye to friends, he told them of one final prophecy. To Learmont's name no foot of earth shall here again belong, and on this hospitable earth shall the hare bear her young. Crossing over the river leader, he was lost from sight and never seen again. This was around 1296. Some said to hill and some to glen their wondrous course had been, but never in the haunts of living men again was Thomas seen. Other prophecies have since been attributed to true Thomas, with Sir Walter Scott publishing some of them in his Minstrelsy of the Scottish Border in 1803. At Eildon Tree, if yon shall be, a brig or tweed yon there may see, is attributed to the viewpoint on the Eildon Hill, where three bridges over the river were later constructed and could be seen from it. The tree no longer exists, but there was a stone placed there to mark where it had been, and it's believed it was from this very spot the Fairy Queen led Thomas into Fairyland in the heart of the hollowed-out hill. Another cites York was, London is, and Edinburgh will be the biggest and bonniest of all the three. Edinburgh expanded from its old town to its new town and has swallowed up many of the surrounding villages over the centuries. Another was, at Threeburn Grange in an after day, there shall be a lang and bloody fray, where a three-thumbed right by the reins shall hold, three king's horse, both stout and bold, and the three burns three days will rin wi blood o' the slain that fall therein. It's thought this was a place in Berwickshire called Grains, where three small burns meet, and many years later, during the French Revolution, a Douglas was born with what supposedly looked like an extra thumb on one of his hands. Those in the locality who were superstitious believed the prophecy had come true to some extent anyway. He is also credited with the curse at Fivey Castle in Aberdeenshire. The castle had waited seven years and a day for the rhymer to visit, and when he did he was accompanied by a violent storm of wind and rain that stripped the trees of their leaves and shut the castle gates with a loud crash. However, it was observed near to the spot where Thomas stood, that there was not enough wind to shake a pile of grass 
or move a hair of his beard. While there, he recited the fivey curse, so the legend goes. Known as the Weeping Atones curse, he predicted, Fivey, fivey, there will never thrive, as long as there's in these stains three. There's yin until the highest tower, there's yin until the lady's bower, there's yin aneath the water's et, and there are three stains yous never get. Two of the stones were discovered, one of which is kept in the castle, but the third has never been found. These are just some of his many prophecies. Thomas the Rhymer, who is thought to have died somewhere around 1296, continued to be venerated for centuries after his death, and today there is a memorial to him at his beloved Eildon Hill near Melrose.